Sermon 9 The Lord who became the sin offering of atonement. Isaiah chapter 53 verses 7 to 12 He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before its shearers is silent, so he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment, and who will declare his generation? For he was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgressions of my people he was stricken, and they made his grave with the wicked, but with the rich at his death, because he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him, he has put him to grief. When you make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the labour of his soul and be satisfied. By his knowledge my righteous servant shall justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore I will divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bore the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. I would like to testify about the Lord, who became the sin offering of atonement through today's word. The word atonement has the meaning of appease, compensate or cover. The meaning of this atonement can be understood by looking at God's retaliatory war to avenge his people in the Old Testament times. If the Israelites won the war by retaliation against the enemy, the war itself could be a way of atonement for their own people. Let's assume that a war breaks out and the king and people of a country fight against the enemy, but in the first war they lose and many of their own people die. And in the next war, if the king of that country avenged the enemies of the people by killing all the opponents and winning, this can also be said to be atonement. The meaning of atonement is the same as when our heart longs to take revenge on our enemies, and when that wish is fulfilled, then our heart is appeased. We may describe this as atonement or expiation. Today's scripture reading also speaks about this. It is written in Isaiah chapter 53 verses 7 to 12. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before its shearers is silent, so he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment, and who will declare his generation? For he was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgressions of my people he was stricken, and they made his grave with the wicked, but with the rich at his death, because he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him, he has put him to grief. When you make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Earlier, I said that the meaning of atonement is to appease, compensate or cover. Just as our hearts are appeased by taking more revenge on our enemies than we suffered, Heavenly Father's wrath toward us was appeased by the baptism that Jesus received, his blood on the cross and his resurrection. This is because Jesus received the sins of the world through the baptism he received from John the Baptist, bore the condemnation of sins by being crucified and thereby obtained sufficient reparation for the wages of our sins. In this way, Jesus became the propitiation for the sins of mankind. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, came to us incarnated in the flesh of man 
and by being baptised by John the Baptist according to his father's will, he bore the sins of the world once and for all, died on the cross, rose from the dead and saved us, the believers, from the sins of the world. Like this, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, took upon the sins of mankind by being baptised by John the Baptist and bore the punishment on the cross in our place. This is the evidence that he became the propitiation by bearing the condemnation for the sins of mankind. This means that the baptism and the blood of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, were received by God the Father as atonement for our sins. This truth made the heart of God's wrath toward us contented at once, and his heart was appeased. The first human beings, Adam and Eve, were tempted by Satan and fell into the sin of not believing in the word of God. Thus, human beings' relationship with God was cut off due to the sin of not believing in the word of God and uniting with Satan. So God had to pass judgment on the sins of mankind to his son, Jesus Christ. Because God loves us, he planned and proceeded to save sinners by using his Son as a sin offering for mankind. God the Father allowed his Son to be offered as a sacrificial atonement according to his own plan. If he directly judges people who resemble him for their sins, they will end in death. So he prepared Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as a mediator between him and mankind. Because God wanted to communicate with the human beings he created, he prepared a sin offering for them to pacify his heart. God the Father was the one who planned the work of salvation to have a good relationship with human beings. God the Father decided to offer his son Jesus Christ as a sacrifice for the sins of mankind and to have Jesus baptised to pass on the sins of the world to judge their sins. God sent his son to this earth and made him bear the sins of the human race by being baptised by John the Baptist, had him bleed on the cross and Jesus has thereby become our sin offering. When God the Father saw his son Jesus Christ baptised by John the Baptist and shed his blood on the cross, his wrath against our sins was appeased. God's heart is pacified in this way because Jesus Christ, the Son of God, took upon the sins of this world by being baptised by John the Baptist and bore the punishment of our sins on the cross. I had to pass all your sins onto my Son through his baptism and judge them by crucifying him on the cross. This is because I loved you all. Because I love you, I wanted to appease my righteous heart by using my son as a sin offering to judge the sins of mankind. I made my son take upon all your sins and bear the condemnation in your place. So now my heart of wrath due to your sins has been appeased. I made my son as the sacrifice to save you from all the sins of this world and my heart was soothed through him. The Bible says that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, was baptised by John the Baptist, died on the cross and has thereby saved you and me from all the sins of the world. God is saying that he sacrificed his Son to atone for the sins of mankind. He made his Son the sin offering of mankind to be judged for all our sins and saved us who believe in this truth. To save you and me from sin and judgment once and for all, God allowed his son to take over the sins of mankind through his baptism, to be crucified on the cross and therefore his wrath toward us was appeased. In other words, God wanted to settle all compensation for the entirety of our sins through the baptism and sacrifice of his son Jesus Christ and became comforted in his heart. God the Father allowed Jesus Christ to be baptised and shed his blood and it was an act of salvation for us. To pay for your sins, I made my son Jesus Christ be baptised by John the Baptist and let him be crucified to death. 
God wanted to save us sinners by paying the price for our sins by having his son Jesus Christ be baptised by John the Baptist and shed his blood on the cross. When God the Father saw the baptism of his son and the punishment of sins on the cross, his wrath toward us was appeased. It was the sacrifice of atonement set by God to atone for the sins of mankind. The Bible says that God saved us from our sins through the Son of God. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. John chapter 3 verse 16 God sent his son to this earth as the saviour and Jesus took upon all the sins of mankind once and for all by being baptised by John the Baptist and bore the condemnation of our sins on the cross. Because of this act of salvation, God's wrath against man's sins was appeased. Jesus Christ received the judgment of our sins, God's righteous judgment in our place. This means that God the Father has been pacified through the baptism and the blood of his Son, Jesus Christ. So, he saved us, the believers, from our sins. The wrath of God's heart toward sinners was placated by the baptism and the shedding of the blood of his Son, Jesus Christ. The atonement permitted by God has been accomplished through the baptism that Jesus Christ received from John the Baptist and his death on the cross. It means that God was able to save us all from the sins of the world through the baptism of his Son and the punishment of the cross. Jesus Christ is fundamentally the Son of God who came to this world as the Saviour of mankind. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, took upon the sins of the world through the baptism he received from John the Baptist, was crucified, rose again from the dead and became the saviour of those who believe in this fact. That is why the Lord has become the saviour who saved you and me from the sins of this world, from the judgment of all sins. God says to Satan, Have you plunged human beings who were made in the likeness of my image into sin? So, to save them from the sins of the world, I let my son take upon the sins of this world by being baptised by John the Baptist and let him receive the punishment of the cross in their place to pay off the wages of their sins. With the baptism my son received and the blood he shed on the cross, I was able to complete the work of saving all sinners from the sins of the world. Therefore, I have completed all the judgment required on mankind's sins. God also says to us that in order to save you from your sins, I allowed my son Jesus Christ to bear the sins of the world once and for all from John the Baptist and to receive the judgment for your sins on the cross. Since my son was judged for your sins in this way, Now believe in my righteous work and be saved from your sins. Then you will receive the everlasting remission of sins by believing that all your sins have been judged. This is the sacrifice of atonement. Do you understand this word? As I gave an example at the beginning, let's say that in the Old Testament times, the Israelites fought against the enemy, suffered a terrible defeat and many people died. So, in the next war, if they plan well and kill 10,000 of their enemies and only 2,000 of their own, then they have been well rewarded for losing the first war in their minds. Because of this, the Israelites' hearts that wanted to judge the enemy was also appeased. Like this, the heart of God the Father, who wants to judge our sins, was softened because of Jesus Christ. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. John chapter 3 verse 16 In this way, 
God sent his son, Jesus Christ, to this world to be baptised by John the Baptist and to have his son crucified to deliver people from the judgment of all sins. Because of his son, his heart was greatly comforted. Because God the Father allowed his son, Jesus Christ, to be baptised by John the Baptist to take upon the sins of the world, Jesus bore all the condemnation of our sins. Do you understand this? God made his son baptised by John the Baptist and died on the cross so that you and I, who now believe in this work of salvation, can receive true salvation and comfort. From the beginning, God planned the salvation of mankind in Jesus Christ, his son. Our ancestors, Adam and Eve, together with Satan, committed the sin of not believing in the word of God. They did not obey God's command, do not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. This is the sin that the first humans, Adam and Eve, committed against God. God had to give death as a punishment for mankind's sins, but instead sent his own son, Jesus Christ, to this earth, to give salvation through the atonement which his son made by receiving baptism from John the Baptist and dying on the cross. Through the baptism and shedding of the blood of his son, Jesus Christ, God the Father allowed his son to receive the punishment for the sins committed by mankind. As we know, when the triune God created the heavens and the earth, human beings were not children of God at that time. However, God already had a plan to save mankind from sin. And after human beings were created, they were tempted by Satan and placed in a situation where they sinned against God. God allowed the sins of the world to be passed on once and for all through the baptism of his son Jesus Christ, received by John the Baptist. And Jesus carried the sins of the world and was crucified to be condemned for our sins in our place. This is the sacrifice of atonement that God has given us. God's merciful love was contained in this. Through the baptism that he received from John the Baptist and the condemnation that he bore on the cross, Jesus Christ saved us who were made in the likeness of the image of God once and for all. Through the baptism and death of his son, God the Father allowed him to receive the judgment for our sins on our behalf. And since then, for those who want to be saved from their sins, God has allowed them to reach salvation from all their sins through faith in the baptism of his son, Jesus Christ, by John the Baptist and in the blood of the cross. You and I were born on this earth as descendants of Adam and became those who instinctively commit sins every day. Human beings were not sinless children of God from the beginning. When God created mankind, he did not plan to make some of them his children and others not to make his children. If he had planned for us that way from the beginning, we would have called him unfair. On the contrary, he had a plan from the beginning to save us all from our sins through the baptism of his son, Jesus Christ, by John the Baptist and bearing our condemnation on the cross. Satan tempted people to commit sins against the word of God, but instead, God was pleased to show his mercy through the baptism and redemption on the cross of Jesus Christ, his son. To accomplish the salvation of mankind, he planned to send his son, Jesus Christ, to earth, incarnated in the flesh. God allowed his son to be baptised by John the Baptist, the greatest of all those born of women, so that Jesus could take upon the sins of mankind. And he wanted to complete his just and righteous salvation by having his son be crucified on the cross, so that his son could bear the condemnation of our sins in our place. This is why he does not hesitate to make us his children who believe in the baptism and blood of his son, Jesus Christ. What the Lord wants to reveal to us through the word of the Bible is that God has saved us through the baptism and the blood on the cross of his son, Jesus Christ. 
we human beings were created in the image of God from birth. Through this, we can see that God had already planned to make us his children from the beginning. There are several evidences that mankind is in the image of God. Since God lives forever, mankind also seeks eternal life. God is holy, so even though people live their lives in a mess, they want to pursue holiness in their hearts. Also, God is just. Thus, people demand fairness from others, even though they are lousy, unjust and selfish. In countries with a presidential system, there are ruling parties and opposition parties, and the opposition parties ask, why does the president conduct politics in this way, and criticise the government? Then, later, when the ruling party changes through elections, the opposing party interrogates the current administration. Why does the president do that? Did the first lady buy the clothes with her own money? Wasn't it bought with state money? Even at a National Assembly hearing, they say, he is not suitable. He made a lot of money by speculating in real estate and his children go into college illegally. So why are you trying to make him a minister? When they were in power, they said he was a decent person. But when the administration changed, they keep nitpicking everything. This is what it means to say, even though I'm not perfect, you should cut me some slack. It is because we are all human beings in the image of God. Human beings who resemble God desire to be fair, to be holy and to give and receive love. Everyone does not want to be a tyrannical person. Rather, people want to love others and lead themselves well, but in reality, it is not so. It is because they violated the word of God and sin entered their hearts. Originally, God created human beings in the image of God, so they hated sin, but after they first sinned, they came to love sin. Since we are fundamentally born as descendants of Adam, we do not have the ability to live a holy life like God. The human race, born with sins as descendants of Adam, will live in this world and be judged and destroyed for their sins. So God the Father sent his Son, Jesus Christ, into this world, and Jesus Christ took upon our sins once and for all through the baptism he received from John the Baptist, bore the punishment of our sins and has thereby saved us from them. In other words, through the baptism of his son and his sacrifice on the cross, God the Father received compensation for our sins. It is like vicarious satisfaction to the heart of God. God's wrath against sin toward us was appeased through Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who bore our sins through his baptism and received the judgment for our sins in our place. This is why God the Father saved every believer from their sins and judgment once and for all through his Son, who sacrificed himself as our propitiation. The Son of God became our propitiation. It is written in Isaiah chapter 53 verse 10, Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him, he has put him to grief. When you make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. What is an offering for sin? It is a sacrifice for sin before God. It is to be washed away from one's sins. For example, If I accidentally break somebody else's $5 item, I have to compensate by adding one-fifth more to it. This is an offering for sin. In other words, we must die for our sins, but Jesus Christ, the Son of our God, was baptised by John the Baptist to take upon our sins and shed his blood on the cross to pay for our sins. That is why we can receive the remission of our sins through Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who was baptised by John the Baptist and was crucified. 
Put differently, Jesus Christ became an offering for sin to pay for our sins. It is written in verse 11, He shall see the labour of his soul and be satisfied. By his knowledge my righteous servant shall justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. This word is spoken of those who believe in the righteous salvation of the Lord, who took upon the sins of the world by being baptised by John the Baptist, shed his blood on the cross and rose from the dead. About 700 years before Jesus came to this earth, God's servant, the prophet Isaiah, said that Jesus Christ would come to this earth in the future, be baptised by John the Baptist to save mankind and shed his blood to pay the price for our sins. He shall see the labour of his soul and be satisfied. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, took upon the sins of the world by being baptised by John the Baptist and died on the cross to receive judgment for our sins. It means that our Lord saved us by paying the price for our sins. In this way, since the Lord paid the price for our sins by being baptised by John the Baptist and shedding his blood, how can we not believe that the Lord is our Saviour? By his knowledge, my righteous servant shall justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Isaiah chapter 53 verse 11 This means that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, came to this earth and took upon himself the sins of mankind by being baptised by John the Baptist. According to Matthew chapter 1 verse 21, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, borrowed the body of the Virgin Mary and was born on this earth. The angel said to Mary, And she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Matthew chapter 1 verse 21 In this way, God said that Jesus would borrow the body of Mary and be born on this earth as the saviour of mankind. And when Jesus was 30 years old, he was baptised by John the Baptist and took upon himself the sins of the world once and for all. It is written in Matthew chapter 3 verses 13 to 17 that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, took upon the sins of mankind through the baptism he received by John the Baptist. Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptised by him. And John tried to prevent him, saying, I need to be baptised by you, and are you coming to me? But Jesus answered and said to him, Permit it to be so now, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfil all righteousness. Then he allowed him. When he had been baptised, Jesus came up immediately from the water, and behold, the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting upon him. And suddenly a voice came from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. It is written in Isaiah chapter 53 verse 11, He shall see the labour of his soul and be satisfied. By his knowledge my righteous servant shall justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. The word of this prophecy is that in the New Testament age, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, took upon the sins of mankind once and for all through the baptism received by John the Baptist and paid the full price for our sins by shedding his blood on the cross. According to the word of this prophecy, The Lord shall bear our iniquities. Jesus took upon all the sins of the world once and for all and washed them away through the baptism received by John the Baptist. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, bore the punishment of our sins once and for all by being crucified and shedding his blood. Jesus is sinless because he is fundamentally the Son of God but he bore our sins once and for all with the baptism he received from John the Baptist and received the punishment for our sins on the cross in our place. Then, in Matthew chapter 3 verse 13, refers to the time when Jesus Christ, the Son of God, went to the Jordan River to be baptised by John the Baptist. 
In other words, it refers to the time when Jesus was 30 years old and went to be baptised by John the Baptist. Jesus, at the age of 30, visited John the Baptist, who was baptising in the Jordan River to save mankind from the sins of this world. Then John the Baptist said to Jesus, I need to be baptised by you, and are you coming to me? I must be baptised by you. John the Baptist knew who Jesus Christ was through the Holy Spirit. In Matthew chapter 3 verse 15, Jesus said to him, Permit it to be so now, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfil all righteousness. Then he allowed him. Thus, Jesus was baptised by John the Baptist. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, was baptised by John the Baptist and took upon the sins of the world once and for all with his own body. In other words, Jesus did the work of righteous salvation by bearing the sins of the world. This word can also be found in the Old Testament, Isaiah chapter 52, verses 13 to 15. Behold, my servant shall deal prudently, he shall be exalted and extolled and be very high. Just as many were astonished at you, so his visage was marred more than any man, and his form more than the sons of men. So shall he sprinkle many nations. Kings shall shut their mouths at him. For what had not been told them, they shall see, and what they had not heard, they shall consider. In the New Testament, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, was baptised by John the Baptist to take upon the sins of mankind once and for all, died on the cross and rose from the dead. Jesus was baptised by John the Baptist to bear the sins of the world and became our propitiation. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, came to this earth, was baptised, crucified and rose from the dead. Now, there are many people all over the world who believe in this righteous work of Jesus Christ, praise him and exalt him. Also, God the Father is saying that when the time comes, there will be an innumerable number of people who will give glory to him by believing in Jesus Christ, who was baptised, died on the cross and rose from the dead. In the Old Testament, sacrifices for atonement are written in Leviticus chapter 16, and the New Testament focuses on Jesus Christ being baptised by John the Baptist and crucified. The Apostle Paul said in Romans chapter 3 verse 25, whom God set forth as a propitiation by his blood, through faith, to demonstrate his righteousness, because in his forbearance God had passed over the sins that were previously committed. This means that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, took upon the sins of the world once and for all with the baptism received by John the Baptist, shed his blood on the cross and thereby became the propitiation between the holy God and human beings. Here, propitiation refers to the sacrificial offering that relieves the wrath of God with the baptism of Jesus and his blood, that is, the sacrifice for the forgiveness of sins. When we were born into this world, we were unable to communicate with God from the beginning because of the sin we inherited as Adam. However, the Son of God took upon the sins of mankind by being baptised by John the Baptist and became the sacrifice for all our sins on the cross, bringing about reconciliation between us who believe in this propitiation of salvation and God. This is a sacrifice of reconciliation for the restoration of the relationship between God and mankind. It means that God the Father sent his Son to this earth and let him do the duties of Jesus Christ himself. Before God the Father, Jesus had to do the work of remission of the sins of all people to fulfil his duties as Christ. Jesus Christ had to first come to this earth incarnated in the flesh of a man to do his work. And when he turned 30, he had to be baptised by John the Baptist to take upon the sins of mankind once and for all. 
It is because Jesus bore the sins of mankind through his baptism that he was crucified to death, rose from the dead and thereby has become our saviour. Jesus became the propitiation between God the Father and us. Originally, we were the ones to be judged by God for our sins, but through faith in the baptism of Jesus Christ by John the Baptist and his blood on the cross, we can live in peace with God. By saving us from our sins, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, created a relationship of love between God and us. Our Saviour Jesus Christ reconciled our relationship with God by offering himself as a propitiation through the baptism he received from John the Baptist. Here, reconciled means that Jesus made peace between the hostile relationship between God and human beings because of sins. We human beings were sinners before God. But God the Father sent his Son, Jesus Christ, to bear our sins once and for all by being baptised by John the Baptist and Jesus paid for our sins by offering the sacrifice for our sins with his blood on the cross. So, we have become righteous before God, no longer sinners, by faith. In other words, God the Father made his Son, Jesus, bear our sins once and for all by being baptised, shed his blood and die on the cross. And Jesus has thereby fulfilled all the work of saving us who believe from the sins of this world and judgment. Jesus Christ fulfilled the will of God the Father once and for all through the sacrifice of atonement. The Bible says in John chapter 19 verses 28 to 30. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, said, I thirst. Now a vessel full of sour wine was sitting there, and they filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on hyssop, and put it to his mouth. So when Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, It is finished, and bowing his head, he gave up his spirit. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, had to be baptised by John the Baptist and shed all the blood in his heart to death on the cross. Because Jesus bore the sins of mankind, he had to be crucified to pay off their wages. Jesus was crucified, suffered the pain of judgment for our sins, died and rose from the dead. Every time the heart of Jesus beat, the blood that flowed along the arteries had to go back to the heart through the hands and feet, but the blood ran out through his hands and feet nailed to the cross, and he suffered the pain of death. This kind of pain is beyond human limits. That is why our Lord said, I thirst, before dying on the cross. Because Jesus Christ poured out all his blood, the moisture in his body was gone. People put sour wine on hyssop and put it to his mouth, but he did not drink it. After being baptised, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, was crucified to death, and he said, just before passing away, It is finished. His last word as he left this world were, It is finished. What did the Lord finish by coming to this earth? It means that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, took upon all the sins of mankind once and for all through the baptism he received by John the Baptist, bore the condemnation of all the sins of mankind by dying on the cross, and has thereby fulfilled the will of God the Father once and for all. This sacrifice of atonement is that God the Father handed over the sins of mankind to his Son for him to be judged for them in our place. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, came to this earth, was baptised by John the Baptist, was crucified and died, paying the price for our sins once and for all, to save us the believers from the sins of the world. This is what God the Father is satisfied with, and it is also a wonderful work of salvation for us. 
God is saying, My son took upon your sins once and for all with the baptism he received from John the Baptist and bore the condemnation of all sins in your place with his crucifixion. Now the price of your sins has been paid for. I will no longer ask you to pay for your sins. However, your salvation is determined according to whether you believe in the truth of salvation, which was completely paid for by the baptism my son received and his blood on the cross. The price for your sins has been paid once and for all by the baptism my son received from John the Baptist and the blood on the cross. I will see your faith. Those who believe in the baptism my son received from John the Baptist and the blood on the cross will be saved from all their sins. Then you will become sinless through faith. So from now on, believe in the gospel that my son, Jesus Christ, has saved you from the sins of this world once and for all with his baptism and blood. I will pour out the Holy Spirit and the deliverance from sin into the hearts of those who believe in the truth of salvation that saved you from the sins of the world. In this way, God spoke the word of promise. It is that through the baptism and blood of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the sins of our hearts have been blotted out once and for all. We can be sure of our salvation through faith in the baptism of Jesus and the blood on the cross. From now on, those who believe in this truth will be saved from all their sins and receive the Holy Spirit as a gift. Those who have received salvation and the Holy Spirit through faith in this way become God's people. The remission of one's sins is not achieved by believing in the man-made Nicene Creed but by believing in the baptism that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, received from John the Baptist and the blood on the cross. Those who believe in this truth are saved from their sins because God paid the full price for sins through the baptism and shedding of the blood of his Son, Jesus Christ. This is because God has received full compensation for all our sins and judgment through the baptism of his son, Jesus Christ, and his death on the cross. This gospel is the sacrifice of atonement that God the Father speaks of to us through his son. It is written in Isaiah chapter 53 verse 12, Therefore I will divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bore the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. This word means that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, came to this earth, took upon the sins of this world once and for all by being baptised by John the Baptist, bore the curse and judgment for all the sins on the cross, rose from the dead again, and has thereby saved us, his believers. In this way, the Lord saved mankind by paying for the sins of mankind once and for all with the baptism received from John the Baptist and the blood on the cross. So we must believe in this truth in our hearts. God said that he shall see the labour of his soul and be satisfied. It satisfied the heart of God the Father of Jesus Christ that Jesus Christ came to this earth and saved us through the baptism he received from John the Baptist and shedding his blood to death. Since the Son of God saved all mankind from their sins by being baptised and shedding his blood, now all people can receive salvation once and for all, thank our Lord and live by faith. All of this was satisfactory in the sight of our God. While living for 33 years after coming to this earth, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, took upon the sins of all people through the baptism he received from John the Baptist, bore condemnation for all sins on the cross, and rose from the dead. In other words, Jesus solved the problem of all the sins and curses of this world once and for all with his baptism and blood. It is written in Isaiah chapter 53 verse 11, He shall see the labour of his soul and be satisfied. By his knowledge my righteous servant shall justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. 
we can see the word bear here. We must know that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, had to be baptised by John the Baptist to bear all the sins of mankind. To pass this object here to the other side, there must be a mediator who can do this in the middle. Then the other side will bear it. The mediator is John the Baptist, who is the greatest among those born of women. Matthew chapter 11 verse 11 The New Testament says that John the Baptist baptised Jesus to take upon the sins of the world once and for all. And Jesus bore the punishment of them in our place on the cross. It is written in Isaiah chapter 53 verse 5 but he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. The sacrifice of atonement in the Old Testament begins in the New Testament when Jesus took upon the sins of the world once and for all by being baptised by John the Baptist. In this way, the baptism of Jesus, the Son of God, and his blood on the cross are connected to our salvation. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, was baptised by John the Baptist for us sinners and shed his blood to death on the cross to bear the punishment for our sins. From now on, those of us who believe this fact can thank God, our Saviour, for freeing us from our sins and God the Father obtained sufficient reparation for the wages of our sins through the baptism and death on the cross of his Son. While Jesus came to this earth and lived for 33 years, he was baptised by John the Baptist and bore all the condemnation of sins by being crucified to death to become our propitiation so we can be saved by this faith. Jesus suffered humiliation from the creatures he created. But because the Lord saved his people from their sins once and for all by being baptised and shedding his blood on the cross, countless souls who believe in him now can be saved from their sins and rejoice. That is why the heart of our Lord is glad. God the Father is satisfied that his Son saved us by suffering and dying on this earth. And now we too have become those who are thankful that we can be saved because of the baptism he received for us and his blood. Aren't you satisfied that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, sacrificed himself as the propitiation for us? Aren't you grateful to him? All those who have been saved from their sins by believing in the baptism and blood of Jesus Christ have hearts of gratitude. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, made atonement for our sins with his baptism and blood, and now he has become the Saviour who saves us from the sins of the world. Therefore, our Lord has now become the Saviour who has saved us from the sins of the world by making atonement for our sins. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, became the Saviour who saved all people in this world from their sins by sacrificing himself as the propitiation for our sins. He has become our true Saviour. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is the one who truly gave us salvation from sin and new life. He is the one who makes us believers into children of God and takes us to heaven. He is also the God who loves us forever. It is clear that Jesus loves us forever. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is the one who lives forever and wants us to be saved by believing that he paid off the wages of our sins with the baptism he received and the blood he shed on the cross. If we believe that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, has now delivered us from the sins of the world through the baptism he received from John the Baptist and his death on the cross, then we will be saved from all our sins. If we believe in the sacrificial love of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who became the propitiation for our sins in our hearts, we become believers in the truth within the will of God the Father. Jesus, who came to this earth for us, washed away all the sins of the world with the baptism he received from John the Baptist and his blood, and therefore he has become the Saviour who made atonement for our sins. 
Do you believe this? Jesus offered himself as the propitiation for our sins, to pay off the wages of our sins. Because of our sins, we had a wall with God. But Jesus Christ, the Son of God, has reconciled us to God through his baptism and blood, and has now made it possible for us to love God through this faith. Those who believe in this word are exceedingly grateful to God and love him. This salvation was fulfilled once and for all when Jesus Christ came to this earth and offered himself as our sacrificial offering of atonement. This is the offering for sin written in Isaiah chapter 53. What we need to know is that Jesus did not just suffer on the cross, but actually came to this earth as a man, was baptised by John the Baptist to take upon our sins, and paid the price for the sins of mankind by being crucified. So he has become the eternal saviour to us, the believers. Through this word of salvation, we can say, For God so loved us that he saved us. God the Father obtained reparation for the wages of our sins through the baptism and blood of his Son, Jesus Christ. God loved us so much that he saved us from the sins of the world once and for all and made us live forever. Since the word of scripture from both testaments is the letter of love sent by God to us, we must have a grateful heart as those who read and believe them. God writes letters of love to us every day, so they became the thick Bible. The remission of all our sins is included in the sacrifice of our atonement of the baptism and blood of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. God the Father said, I loved you and saved you through my Son, Jesus Christ. Because you fell into Satan's temptation and sinned by violating my word, you drifted away from me. So even though I wanted to meet you, I couldn't because your sins blocked us. But I still love you and meet you. In order for me to meet you, I must solve the sin problem between you and me. So I sent my son, Jesus Christ, into this world, incarnated in the flesh of mankind, to solve the problem of your sins once and for all. To absolve you from sins and judgment once and for all, he took upon all the sins of this world once and for all by being baptised by John the Baptist. Carrying all the sins of this world to the cross, he bore the pain you should have suffered, the judgment of sins and the death and sorrow for your sins. You had to die for your sins, but my son Jesus Christ was baptised and died on the cross in your place. As the Lord of Resurrection, I am the one who overcomes your death. To solve the problem of your sins and death, I was baptised and bore the punishment of the cross. So believe this as your salvation. Then you will be saved from all your sins. Until now, Satan the devil has deceived you and kept you away from me for a while. But I have resolved you of all your sins with the baptism I received from John the Baptist and the blood on the cross. Now I have saved you so that even Satan can no longer accuse you of your sins. Believe in the truth of salvation that I saved you from your sins. Believe in the baptism of atonement and the shedding of blood that I paid for your sins as salvation in your heart. Then we can meet again and live to love each other. That is why I am sending you my love letters. The Old Testament promised that I would come and save you from your sins and the New Testament wrote that I had completed the work of saving you from the sins of the world through the baptism and blood according to the word of covenant I had promised in the Old Testament. Do you believe in the love of salvation that I have fulfilled for you? Now believe in the sacrifice of peace offering so that we can meet and love each other. Receive forgiveness of sins by believing in the delicious word of life and enjoy eternal life with me. This is the message of the letter of love and salvation that God has sent to us. Do you believe this? How great is our God, the Saviour of love? We can know that God not only created us, but also established a great plan of eternal life for us. 
as the one who has the power to bless us with the remission of sins, God has now made us righteous without sin. For a while, the relationship between God and man was severed by Satan the devil. But Jesus Christ, the Son of God, was baptised by John the Baptist to take upon the sins of the world once and for all, made atonement for our sins by shedding his blood and dying on the cross, rose from the dead and has thereby become our Saviour and the propitiation. Jesus Christ is truly the wonderful Saviour of mankind. He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. There is no one who can stand against Jesus Christ in heaven and on earth. There is only one thing he cannot do, and that is lying. Since God the Father, his Son Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit love us now, in order to establish and maintain a relationship of love that saves us from our sins, he made the atonement for our sins by being baptised and crucified. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, tells us, You must believe that I have sacrificed myself as a propitiation for your sins. Believe in the baptism that I received and my blood. Then, with that faith, we can be at peace and have eternal life together. From now on, what you must do is believe in your hearts that I was baptised by John the Baptist and shed my blood on the cross to become your propitiation. You will be saved as long as you believe in my baptism and blood as your salvation. Do you believe this? All of God's will is fulfilled when we believe in the salvation God has given us. All we have to do is to believe in the fact of salvation that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, became our propitiation for sin. I believe in this truth. Do you also have this faith? If so, then we have become those who have a relationship with the Lord. Now, whenever we call the Lord our Saviour, he listens to us. This is God's love and the plan of salvation for us. Therefore, by faith in the baptism that the Lord received and his blood, we have become his people and workers. We sometimes suffer for the Lord while living on this earth. But the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that we will enjoy in the future. In the future, we will receive many blessings from God. Hallelujah.